Hello, everybody. So you want to be like this bear and get into Imperial College London. Why? Why do you want to get into Imperial College? I hope that your reasons are better than Imperial College sounding really cool. But good news is, if you want to learn science and engineering and you want to have some exponential character growth, then Imperial College is the place for you. Because here at Imperial, you will get plenty of both. On a more serious note, I will be breaking down how to get into Imperial College London, especially with some tips and tricks for international students that may not have a lot of Imperial College alumni in their home country to ask information about. This video will consist of four parts. The first part being the most common way that people would get rejected and not come to Imperial College. The second would be the grades and academic requirements to get into the first round of the Imperial College admissions process. The third part would be talking about interviews. And the fourth part would be some tips and tricks about how you might want to move laterally within Imperial College London once you have been accepted. Just a disclaimer, these are just my opinions and what I have learned after three years at Imperial College. So because I'm not part of the admissions committee or anything like that, if you really want proper admissions advice, you might want to check the website instead. But in any case, here's part one. So the main reason why I think a lot of people who want to get into Imperial College and eventually don't get into Imperial College, I think the biggest reason is that people actually reject themselves first. So for some background, I grew up in Singapore and I didn't know a lot of Imperial College alumni growing up. And every time I heard about Imperial College London, I I always just imagine this university which was super exclusive and super hard to get in. And because of this exclusivity, because so little people from your country go to Imperial College, you might start to think that you don't deserve a spot there or that you are not good enough to go there. Another common problem is that you see seniors getting into maybe your dream school or Imperial College London and you start to compare yourself with them and say, hey, I'm not as good as XYZ and if they got in, maybe I don't deserve a spot there. So because of that, you reject yourself right from the get-go. I'm not sure if any of you feel this way, but that's definitely how I felt before I applied to Imperial College because I knew of a few people that got into Imperial or were applying to Imperial and they had a whole list of extracurricular activities and clubs and societies that showed their passion and interest in science and research. And honestly, from 13 to 18 years old, all I did was kayak. I didn't do anything outside of school to show that I had a keen interest in science and technology. So I definitely felt very underprepared when I was applying. This may not be very relevant for you especially if you come from like a European country where there are a lot of Imperial College alumni and you don't really see the university as something that is super exclusive. But this message is mainly for the people and the students that are applying to Imperial College right now and don't really have as much exposure to the alumni base and you think that this is some super exclusive Hogwarts club. It's not. Just go for it. Just try. All you have to do while applying is remember that even if you think you are a bad candidate and say if you are a weaker candidate, your chances may be slimmer compared to others. But if you don't apply, your chances are zero. So yeah, since you pay the flat fee for the UCAS application and you get to apply up to five schools, you might as well just try Imperial College London. So yeah, even if Imperial College does reject you at the end, it doesn't really matter. There's no shame in trying. And at least this way, if Imperial College rejects you rather than you reject yourself, you don't really have to live with the question whether am I good enough? Should I have tried? Should I have not tried? Just apply for it, try your best and see where it takes you. Now that we have agreed that you are going to apply to Imperial College, the next step is getting in. If you like the video so far and you find it helpful, do give a like and subscribe to this channel. It really helps the video out and I appreciate it a lot. Also, if you are an international student, I've made several other international student related videos that I will link in the description box or at the end of this video. To get into any UK universities, there are only a few factors you can change. One is your grades. The second is your interview and third is your personal statement. There aren't a lot of things that you can really do to improve your chances, especially if your grades are already out. So part two, is getting the grades. If you are still studying and you have not actually taken your A-levels or the equivalent exams yet, then all you have to do is check the minimum required grades, do your best for the exams, and try to hit the minimum required grades or better. But if you have already gotten your grades and you have met the minimum requirement, now here's where the excitement and self-doubt comes. For example, if the minimum requirement for the course you want to get in is AAB, and you have just met the minimum requirement by scoring AAB. Now, is that enough? I honestly don't know how 
how the entire process works and there's no need to second guess Imperial's admission process. If they say AAB is sufficient, then you have met the minimum requirement. Of course, I do think that scoring better than the minimum requirement is going to increase your chances because there are only so few factors that they can judge you on. For example, your grades, your interview and your personal statement. So if two applicants have the same personal statement, which it shouldn't happen, and have the same interview score, then I guess the person that scored better and maybe scored 3A star won a Nobel Prize and went to the moon before would have an edge over your application process. But one other thing you have to understand is that just because that person is stronger and that person gets the spot, it doesn't mean you don't get the spot. There are a lot of spots available at Imperial College London. That other applicant could be the top 10% of the application process and you could be just nice right in the center 50th percentile you will never know but of course just seeing what the minimum requirement is is never going to satisfy you because when i was applying for my masters or back then when i was applying for my undergraduate unis i saw the minimum requirement but i still wanted to see real life examples of what people scored to get into imperial college london so this is where you can check out linkedin for those of you who don't know what linkedin is linkedin is basically tinder for employers and employees once you are on linkedin you can get a lot of things like information about internship opportunities, job offers, anxiety, seniors grades and what other information you crave. So if you're really curious about what kind of grades is required to get into Imperial College, I guess if you stalk long and hard enough at LinkedIn, you will find a senior from your home country that took the same exam or similar exam as you who is studying in Imperial College either in the first year, second year, third year or masters. And then from their LinkedIn profile, if they wrote what they scored for their high school exams like their IB or their A-levels, then you can have a better gauge and see what are some real scores that got them into Imperial College London. But then again, you have to be warned that there is going to be some form of survivorship bias where the people that scored better would put their grades on LinkedIn and the people that maybe just met or didn't even meet the requirement but still got in they might not put the uh, grades on LinkedIn. So be aware of this, but if you're really curious, you can go and check LinkedIn to find out more. If you hit the minimum requirement, I think the good part is that you are probably past the auto-rejection stage and that would at least get you to the next round. I'm not sure about this, but it just does make a bit of sense to me. And if your grades are lacking, but you are not going to try and retake your A-levels, then there's honestly nothing much you can really do. I would say just apply and focus more on your interviews and personal statement to make those other two portions stronger so that you could maybe compensate for your grades. Once again, I want to say that you are going to meet a lot of incredible people who are applying as well and they may have a portfolio or application that is stronger than yours. But you have to remember that in each cohort, there are going to be like thousands of people getting into Imperial College and you don't have to be the top 5% or the top 10% to get in. If you really just want to get in, you just need to be within like the window of opportunity. You don't have to be the best. That being said, you should try your hardest to make your application as strong as possible. And that brings us to part three, the interview. Now, honestly, when I applied to Imperial College, I didn't actually have an interview. Back then when I applied, it was in 2017 and I applied for the Bachelor's for Material Science and Engineering. What I read right now is that Material Science actually has an interview. So take this with a pinch of salt. This information is mainly what I gathered from my friends that had to take an interview to enter Imperial College. So trying to be prepared for the interview is a really difficult task because you are probably in high school, you don't have that much knowledge about science, tech and engineering and you don't really know what they're going to ask. So I think that once you get into the interview, after the small talk like, how are you? How's your day? How's your fish? How's the weather? Then there are three main areas where you can try to prepare for the interview process. The first level, let's say level one, would be what they would expect you to know. Now they don't actually know a lot about you. So make sure that whatever you wrote in your personal statement is something that you can back it up. So if you talked about a certain book, a certain research project, or an area of science that you're interested in in your personal statement, I would think that there's a decent chance that they are going to ask you about it. And if you're not prepared, like you don't even remember reading the book that you wrote about, then I don't think that's going to reflect very well on you. So yes, the people and the professors or lecturers interviewing you, they know a lot and they don't expect you to know that much. And they are not expecting to find the next Sheldon Cooper during this interview. 
interview process. So make sure you prepare for what you think is going to come out, like whatever you wrote in your personal statement and also the A-level topics that you studied. Now moving on to level two. Level two, I would say it's one step above level one. And I would say it's trying to tie your interest in that particular topic with your personal life. For example, if you're applying to engineering because you say you want to build a bridge, then I guess you could say maybe because your father told you that when he went to school, he had to swim 20 kilometers and run 40 kilometers just to go to uni. So right from a very young age, you thought, okay, when I grow up, I want to be an engineer to build a bridge so that no one can use this excuse anymore. Another example is that I do kayaking and and the pedal I use is made up of carbon fiber. In my third year, I studied a module called Polymers and Composite, where we talked about the strength and orientation of carbon fiber. And that was a really, really good module. I guess if the opportunity came up, you could say maybe you wanted to study material science and engineering because you have been using the carbon fiber pedal and it's so light and so strong. And you always wondered how the orientation of the carbon fibers led to the mechanical properties that it has. So I think it's not really about knowing how it works, but showing that curiosity that ties theory to what you see in real life. I think that would be a pretty good step up from level one. Once again, if you want to see what modules are being taught, I'm sure you can check out the department website on it, or you can check out your seniors on LinkedIn and see what modules they took. Level three is something of an over preparation. I think this is when you have a lot of time to prepare for the interview and you just want to be overly prepared. Then you can find out more about the topics and the lecturers. For example, in Imperial College Material Science, we have this lecturer called David Dai that post his videos and his lectures on YouTube and he makes really good YouTube videos. Do like and subscribe to his channel after you like and subscribe to my channel. If you really wanted to over prepare, you could mention this in your interview like you wanted to learn about XYZ concept, you found YouTube videos from this Imperial professor and that really sparked your interest. So you really, really, really want to come to Imperial College to solidify your understanding and, nah, 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 and whatever else you want to say at the interview. I think that would be quite impressive. I would be impressed, but too bad I'm not the interviewer. So try and impress someone else. So now the final part is moving within departments. For example, getting into different forms of engineering have different kinds of difficulty and some engineering courses are more competitive than others. So if you're not particularly keen on any form of engineering or any particular science and you just want to get into Imperial College for the brand name itself, I honestly wouldn't recommend you do that. You're going to suffer a lot. But let's say that's what you really, really want and you just want to do it, then do some research and see which are the easier courses or less competitive courses that you can apply to to get into Imperial College. Now, once you get into a course within Imperial College, there are also chances of you moving laterally. For example, in my first year, there are people that move from material science and engineering to physics. Also, there are people that study a four-year program and once they study three years, rather than doing a master's in the same course, they do a master's in a different field. So this is something that you can take note of when you're applying to Imperial College, especially if you want to get into the school more than the department itself. Okay, so that's basically about it. If you find it useful, then you might want to check out this video over here where I talk about how much it costs in total to study at Imperial College London as an international student. Or you can check out this video to see how a day in the life at Imperial College is like for me. All right, my throat is super dry. I need to go for dinner now. I'm running late. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you again next week. Bye! Bye. Imperial College London Bear. How cool is that? How cool is this? Huh? So cool.